Good morning. My name is Eric Williams, and I would want to welcome you to our uh, second um, Google Hangout on Air for Cisco UCS, our Tech Talk series. I would like to introduce our panel here. I'll start with myself. Um, my name is Eric Williams. I'm a technical marketing engineer for Cisco. I focus on uh, UCS specifically, work with UCS Manager, UCS Central, uh, all of our integrations like UCS Power Tool and such. So I'll start from left to right here. Uh, we'll start with Brad Tarek. Sure. My name is Brad Tarek. I'm a data center architect focused on UCS software. One of the areas that I specifically focus on is UCS Central. And Jeff Silverman. Hi. My name is Jeff Silverman. I'm a UCS technical marketing engineer. I work on Eric's group, and I've been part of the group since before UCS was even launched. Chris Sivakumar. Hi, my name is Chris Sivakumar. I'm part of the UCS product management team, focusing on all sorts of UCS software, including UCS Central. Robert Murray. Hi, I'm Robert Murray. I'm an infrastructure architect with Assurian, and I am our resident UCS me. And Terry? Hi, my name is Terry Van Sickle. I'm the uh, senior architect for compute and virtualization for the uh, home and business solutions part of GE. Well, thank you guys all for joining. So we're going to start and talk to you, Chris, for a little bit. Uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, we, we keep hearing a lot about UCS over the past four or five years, and, um, you know, UCS is getting more and more attention every day. Can you tell me, you know, what kind of attention uh, UCS is garnering and, and, and why it's, it's grabbing that attention of the market? Sure. Um, you know, you know that uh, the server market for several years, uh, there was nothing happening besides uh, innovations that were happening from a processor standpoint year after year. And you would expect a new and faster server to show up every year. And something came along that fundamentally altered how servers are connected and managed in you know, we believe, like to believe that UCS is that something. And essentially, it has taken the complexity out of the compute deployment and, and has started doing management in a fundamentally different way. That sounds pretty interesting. So you mentioned that, you know, UCS is fundamentally changing management. Can you expand upon that a little bit and, and provide a little bit more insight to, to why you think that UCS has uh, fundamentally changed the management scheme of you know, Cisco, uh, Intel servers? Sure, sure. Um, if you look at UCS, um, it essentially gets managed through this one management interface or one management uh, entity called uh, UCS Manager. And what it is is essentially an embedded management system that is an integral part of the system itself. So you have what is called a domain, which is you know essentially 20 chassis worth of 160 servers, and that entire domain is managed through this one entity that is embedded in there. And one other thing that actually happens with that embedded management is the ability for you to essentially have full control end-to-end -end of all of the aspects of that domain, whether it's servers, whether it's the inter inter uh, interconnects for those servers, whether it's properties on uh, the various identities of those servers, whether it's policies that control the behavior of those servers, all of that essentially gets managed through this one entity called UCS Manager. So that's, I think, one of the fundamental attributes of UCS that clearly has differentiated it in the market. So one of the things that uh, I want to expand upon also is the expansion of UCS itself um, over time. So if you look at most customer environments, you start with this one domain or you know up to 160 servers. But as you can imagine, um, sooner or later, the number of servers in a particular customer environment um, can actually expand. And when that expands, um, as we talked about earlier, UCS Manager essentially is looking at those 160 servers and now you need to bring in another instance off UCS Manager and have that instance of UCS Manager code aside with that first instance 
and then that process could repeat itself over and over um, as you uh, increase the number of servers uh, that go along. And there, there is a potential that um, that could complicate your overall management story. So in as much as UCS Manager itself is actually compact, simple, and you know embedded, and so on and so forth, having multiples of those um, sort of co-deciding with each other is, is not a great story when it actually comes to expansion. Um, and that's really where uh, UCS Central comes into play. Right? Hey, so Chris, um, maybe you could give us a little bit of history on how UCS Central was developed when we started this process and, and what are the types of things that were involved from an architectural standpoint. Sure, Jeff. Um, as I was just mentioning, um, when we looked at the expansion of UCS environments, UCS Manager plus UCS Manager plus UCS Manager, one of the key things that we heard from customers is we love the simplicity of what UCS Manager could give us, but could you extend that simplicity in a multiple UCS environment as we are growing our UCS footprint? So when we listened to that request from customers, one of the things that we took away was if there is a way in which we could actually take what UCS Manager does and somehow spread what it does across these multiple UCS management domains, then we then provide a solution for customers that essentially stays simple, even though my overall UCS environment continues to grow. And that's kind of where um, the idea behind UCS Central came about. So you might think, um, so when that happens, um, you know, how far it can go or how big can this environment scale uh, with a single instance of UCS Central. Um, so from a scaling standpoint, um, we're looking at about 10,000 physical servers that can actually be distributed into an environment that's, um, you know, over hundreds of domains um, that can be there. So you could think of this as a single pane of glass that's actually sitting above a collection of UCS managers that is managing your globally distributed environment of 10,000 physical servers. So again, taking the simplicity that was available in the UCS manager context and essentially pushing that simplicity above one level um, into UCS central so that you could actually get that kind of scaling. That's pretty interesting. Um, there's not a lot of other manager or managers that attempt to do this with other projects or products. How does, uh... Yeah, if I interpret your question correctly, uh, um, Eric, you're, you're probably thinking about, you know, manager of managers is not a new area and it's been around for a while. Uh, perhaps, you know, what is different with UCS Central and, you know, sort of may maybe in some ways what sets itself apart, right? Um, one of the key things that happens with most manager of manager products is essentially it's what I would call brute force automation, right? So you're basically looking at a whole set of individual element managers and then, you know, a manager of managers coming up above and then doing brute force automation on each of those individual element managers. UCS Central fundamentally changes that by being a true policy framework that essentially takes the ownership off the individual settings or individual policies that you would have at the UCS manager level and simply pushing that up one level. So in essence, it becomes a policy distributor or policy source for all of the UCS managers um, that are out there. So whether you're looking at pools of resources like, you know, MAC addresses or worldwide names um, or policies or service profiles, all of these get defined globally inside UCS Central and the UCS managers simply become consumers of those configs. So it's not brute force automation, it's really a publish subscribe where UCS Central becomes the owner of those policies and the UCS managers become consumers of those policies. So if you're expanding the UCS environment, when a brand new UCS manager comes on board, 
all you're doing is basically creating another consumer of the policies that you already have. So, so Chris, maybe uh, a good way to show this would actually be to uh, present this for everybody and let them get a sense of what it looks like firsthand. Great idea, Jeff. Go on. So what we're looking at right now is um, a UCS central viewpoint. And one of the things to note is that there's a new construct that's introduced here called the domain group as a way of allowing users to partition the UCS space from a worldwide standpoint. So here I've got a domain group called Europe, and I've got one domain called Amsterdam in there, a domain group called USA with a domain called SFO in here. And now what's really nice is I've got the same level of visibility that I would expect from UCS Manager. So from an inventory standpoint, I can go in and I can peruse and I can see what the chassis look like from the front and back. I can see what individual servers look like and have complete detail over all of the inventory to the point where I can actually see the, the serial numbers for individual DIMMs. Now we've introduced a new construct on the network side called a VLAN alias. And what this is about is recognizing that if we're talking about UCS on a worldwide deployment basis, uh, sometimes the application VLANs that you have are going to be have different IDs depending on where you are around the world. So in this case here, there's there's three different VLANs corresponding to the applications that have different northbound VLAN IDs associated with them. And the way these map in is with the uh, org permissions that provide the multi-tenancy that allow you to only view the VLANs that you have uh, access permission to. So if I were to drill down, for example, into this Coke VLAN and uh, Coke organization and create a template, uh, what I can see is that I've, I'm only exposed to the VLANs that Coke is authorized to see being exchanged in SQL. And similarly, if I drill down into the Pepsi organization, then I can only see the Oracle VLAN ID. So moving a little bit further, one of the big concerns is visibility of addresses, MAC addresses and identifiers. And within UCS Central now, I've got the ability to view all of the MAC addresses on a worldwide basis and then filter out, for example, just the IDs that are in use. And then still have the ability to drill down even further for a particular ID to find out just which service profile it's associated with and which local pool. Now, one of the questions that comes up is, how are the global pools and global policies that are typically associated with UCS Central, how are those made visible within the context of UCS Manager? So, if I were to uh, drill down into UCS Manager for the SFO domain, one of the things I notice now is that I've only got visibility into the local um, ID pools. But if I go and actually make a change or try to make a change in one of the uh, VNIC templates, this is where I then have visibility into the, the global pools um, that are owned within UCS Central. Similarly, if I were to create a new quality of service policy within the context of UCS Central, it's not necessarily going to be visible within UCS Manager from the information tree that you see here on quality of service policies, but from the VNIC template, if you then go to look at the Q, uh, QS policy drop-down menu, that's when you'd have visibility into the global objects. Now, in UCS Central, we still have the same capability to create server pools the same way we do in UCS Manager. Um, but what we have now is 
the ability to have the scope of those pools and those policy qualifiers like you'd expect take on a global scope. So if I'm creating a server policy now for 12 cores, that server pool is now going to span the physical resources that are available in uh, all the domains. So I'm going to do this one last step now to create a, a default vSAN specifying the FCOE VLAN IDs and then move on to actually create and show everyone how we can create global service profiles and have those migrate um, between domains. So right now I'm uh, creating a global service profile and I'm doing this in expert mode and one of the things that you'll notice is the best practice of prefixing the uh, global pools with an identifier, sort of a tag, indicating that it's got global scope, which is what you see here with G-WWNN for the worldwide node name. And I'll do the same thing here and create a virtual HBA referencing that vSAN. And we're pretty close now. Last thing we'll do is create a boot policy. And then what we'll have the ability to do now is assign this to a domain and filter out you know, which domains we might be interested in deploying this global service profile to. So in this case here, I'm going to go deploy it in Amsterdam. And now you'll see what this kind of deployment looks like from the standpoint of not just UCS Central, but UCS Manager as well. And the important point here is in Amsterdam, all of the objects that are needed to resolve the policy um, within UCS Manager are then brought down into um, the local domain and made read-only. So here you see the Coke organization created, you see the global service profile SQL with uh, a kind of a green tag indicating that it's a global policy and you see the same thing here with the boot policy. And note now that the, the VLAN that got pushed down, the, uh, the SQL VLAN, is the VLAN ID appropriate for this particular domain group. Now if I go and change the association so that I'm Instead, moving this entire service profile over to San Francisco, what I see is on the SFO organization, the entire Coke, I'm sorry, the SFO domain, the entire Coke organization gets pushed down as well as the service profile and all of the required policies. So there's, the, the handshake here is what's really important. Uh, UCS Manager is, um, works in, UCS Central works in concert with UCS Manager. It's not really a, a replacement in any way. And here you see on the SFO domain, the corresponding VLAN ID gets created. Now, once I've moved it, then from the standpoint of the Amsterdam domain, since all of those references are gone, then everything gets cleaned up. And let's see if Eric is back and can. Uh... Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, guys. I, there we go. <laughs> I had a little bit of internet problems here, so I'm back online. All right. Um, looks good, Eric. But uh, this looks great. I mean, this uh, this demo is really does show a lot of power of of UCS Central managing multiple UCS managers. I was curious to talk a little bit about, you know, what are some ways people can start to learn? You know, you know, is there anything we can show them that shows them how to actually start utilizing UCS Central, you know, to, to, to start to learn? I mean, I think some ways you can do it are with our with our platform emulator and, and those types of things. Is there, is there some uh, items you can show around how to get people up to speed and actually emulate the real environment in, uh, uh, in and, and actually start utilizing Central right now without having to have real hardware? 
Well, it's, it's a great question. The UTS platform emulator provides all of the access to the UTS uh, data management engine and exposes the XML API. So what you're able to do then, and this is actually what we what we recommend to customers is that as they want to get familiar with UCS Central, the best way to do it is in a nice safe sandbox. So you can bring up the UCS platform emulator, you can actually point it to a live uh, UCS domain and have it bring in the hardware inventory as well as all of the, the logical configuration as well as service profile. And you could do this for multiple UCS domains and create a nice safe sandbox that actually models your entire data center without having to incur any type of risk whatsoever as you start to get familiar with UCS Central. And, and uh, I think we're going to be posting a video with that on our community's website here shortly to talk, that walks through people how to actually, you know, go out to UCS Platform Emulator, grab your physical inventory, and then import that into the emulator, as well as getting your logical configuration from a real system to really emulate your entire environment. Uh, um, you know, uh, without having to have the real hard work to get yourself started. Absolutely, and the and the big advantage here is that it all comes in a a, a risk free context. You really risk nothing as you start to get familiar with it. You're not playing around with production environments. You're playing around with a platform emulator that has modeled completely your production environment. Okay, uh, that sounds great. So what are other things that people can start to utilize and, and learn from, um, things that are available on communities? Is there anything else that, that would be good for someone that are, is new to UCS Central to get up to speed? This is a, a, a new site that we started developing recently, and it's got a, a nice easy tag for everybody to remember. It's communities.cisco.com slash UCS. And what we're posting there is it, it's become a site for collaboration for uh, UCS users everywhere to um, share some of their experiences, to post some of their scripts that have helped them from the standpoint of, of automation, and a way for us as well to uh, stay connected with the UCS community and share information around, around best practices, around the API, SDK, and automation, and, and so forth. Well, that's great. That's great. I know there's a question from the audience about uh, can a local service profile be migrated to a global service profile, and and how and if so, how are pools and policies handled? We'll be answering that particular question a little bit later in the presentation. So it's a great question. That's something we definitely want to address now near the end of the presentation. That's something we were planning to talk about. Well, thanks a lot, Jeff. Um, I want to move over to, um, I want to start talking to a little bit of a couple of our customers, Robert and Terry. Um, I'll start with you, Robert. Um, again, thanks for joining our Hangout. I really appreciate your time. I I'm curious, um, you know, how long you've been a UCS customer and what were the reasonings that you chose to switch to UCS uh, originally? Um, we have been a UCS customer since 2011. So this is our third year using UCS and um, very happy with it. Um, at the time, we had been using traditional rack servers from various vendors um, and we really started looking at the at uh, blades, which we had tried a few times in the past without as much success and, and really didn't see as much payoff as we really wanted until UCS uh, entered the market. I think a lot of the other blade solutions are, you know, they, they take a step in the right direction, um, reducing some of the management, you know, that we might have been doing across 10 or so servers and putting that into, you know, managing 10 servers in one space. But UCS has really taken it to the next level to where we can be managing um, some, our, our largest builds so far have gone up to 16 chassis and 128 blades with uh, a single point of management, even prior to UCS Central, which of course extends that further. So how many, about how many uh, UCS domains and, and, uh, and servers do you have today in your environment? Um, 
Well, we are, um, we just finished our 20th domain. Um, you might think the number of servers would be larger than it is. Uh, the, the number of servers is actually just around 500. So if you really did the math, you, you might see that uh, easy enough to imagine that some of our domains aren't uh, that big, so we go everywhere from uh, a couple of single chassis domains all the way up to 16 chassis domains. And a lot of that is because of some uh, geographic uh, separation, and then even within some data centers where we have requirements for uh, complete physical separation in some of our environments. So. So do you have, is all of your ECS domains in one data center, or are they geographically dispersed? No, we are geographically dispersed um, across across the globe. So we've got a, a couple of data centers in the U.S., uh, Japan, Korea, Australia, and growing. So are you, with UCS Central, I know you, you have up to 20 domains today, and um, what are your plans to start you know, utilizing UCS Central uh, across those do domains, and how do you plan to actually start deploying it? Um, well, we were pretty early adopters with, um, I was really chomping at the vet to get uh, my hands on UCS Central, and it, it happened to come in just as we were getting ready to do um, one of our larger domains. And so we started using it in the 1.0 version, which was primarily for ID management, which was great because, as, you know, for 20 domains, I've got this, you know, SharePoint site running a spreadsheet where I'm keeping track of my IDs to make sure that, you know, we have um, separation and don't uh, duplicate anything. So I um, was really anxious to have UCS Central as that, you know, repository for those. And um, currently that's, Still about the extent of it. I think the new release is fantastic. Um, I've, I'm surprised that it's just a 1.1. It feels more like a you know a, a jump from 1.0 to 2.0. Um, there's so much more functionality in, in it. Um, and, but it's been a fast and furious summer, and um, so far, while I'm deploying the new version, um, I am not. Uh, I haven't gotten up to centralized uh, global templates, which I'm really, really very excited about using. I just haven't gotten there yet. So your plan is to, you know, right now you've kind of started with the uh, take it small and, and methodical approach where you've you really started registering your domains first and then going to managing your pools and policies centrally, and then you may plan to globalize pretty much everything over time, correct? Uh, that's correct, and you know when you're using it for ID management, you know MAC IDs, WWPNs, and things. I think it's worth mentioning to, to folks it, it's very low risk. So you know if if I were to go and turn off my UCS central instance, um, about the only impact I would have is if I went to go spin up a new service profile that had you know templates calling UCS central for addresses, and it was not available, um, that creation of the service profile would bomb because it was trying to get an address from a from a pool that was offline. But in terms of the systems running and and everything, you know, once they've grabbed their address, that's their address. You know, um, so uh, really didn't have a whole lot of hesitation to to jump in there and start using it. So are your plans, um, you know, looking at your existing domains and the, the domains that you have, you know, coming in the future, are your plan, what are your plans, uh, you know, to, to utilize Central in your existing UCS domains and versus, you know, your newer domains? Are you planning to retrofit your existing domains, um, you know, with, with globalization over time or just really focus on, you know, as you add new hardware, add new domains, and, and change uh, maybe from M2 to M3 blades and whatnot, you, you know, as you, you know, reassociate your service profiles, globalize those items. I'm just curious to get your, your, your plans uh, regarding how you're, you're going to take your existing domains and, and, and manage your new domains and how that might differ. Um, well, the, the, the thing, the first step for us will be, because right now we actually have um, a UCS central instance 
in each data center, which has resulted in you know five or so instances. So we'll want to be collapsing that into a single UCS central instance, which should be easy enough, again, since we're just using IDs, and of course, those IDs are unique uh, uh, among each instance. Um, the getting to use the templates is, is going to be our next uh, goal. You know, basically, we want to avoid as many things that we can uh, not have to create for each new domain that we stand up. Um, you know, having single, as few configuration items as possible. So today, I'm, I'm creating templates in multiple domains that are exactly the same. I use the, their, their names are the same. Their names aren't specific to their domains. The, you know, the naming convention is mirrored. And, you know, we've, we've managed that generally with backing up and importing configs. Um, but a lot of that is after, you know, getting those templates and, and things like that. So having all of that centralized will be wonderful. So it'll help ease your deployments where you, instead of having to create the same configuration on each domain, you can create it once in central and, and basically up-level where you reference all of those tools and policies and templates in one place versus 20 places. Right. And, you know, uh, on the rare occasion that a template needs to get tweaked, you know, today that would mean, oh, we need to go do that tweak in 20 places and make sure that we do the same tweak exactly right in 20 places. And we don't want to do that. No, that's great. So as part of uh, as part of you doing testing with Central, what, what's what been the, uh, the process of how you've actually started to learn Central, test it out in your labs and such? I'm curious if you've, uh, you know, I know you probably are using real systems. Have you made any usage of the platform emulator as well as part of that testing? Yeah. Um, Yes, I've used the emulator. Um, I've, I'm kind of lucky that we have um, built our lab environment on UCS as well. Um, and that is intentionally an environment where we have sort of the production lab equipment where we don't want to mess that up because people are doing things on it. And then we have another one where we can migrate. We, we split VMware clusters and we can migrate things off of this UCS and do complete teardowns and bring people in and say, hey, look, let's pretend like it just came out of the box, you know, and, and, and do things with that. But the emulator is fantastic. Um, it's almost, it has some advantages over our lab because, you know, our lab is not a 16 chassis build, but I can make an emulator that 16 chassis build just by importing it. And it's, you know, I, I've been using it, you know, since 2011 and it's, you know, the, it has improved, you know, dramatically. What we can do with it today is pretty amazing. And, of course, if, if folks don't already know, the UCS Central is a virtual device as well. So, you know, you can spin that up in a, in a VMware Fusion or workstation. Um, in fact, um, when one of my one of the tips for you, you can run into the what comes first, the chicken or the egg thing, if you're planning on UCS Central being hosted on an ESX host, for instance, and you're going, well, i got to build the ESX host, you know, how do I, but, you know, I want to get its MAC addresses and things from UCS Central, but UCS Central is going to sit on the ESX host, and, you know, so the way that I address that is I just spin up an instance on my laptop, and I go into a, a data center where I'm going to be working. Um, I usually am on site for new builds, and, you know, on a folding chair and a box for a desk. And <laughs> so that's how I do it. I, I get my initial builds going. You can then either go to the trouble of, you know, exporting that existing instance from your workstation up or just, um, you know, recreate the same pools and names and everything, you know, and turn the one off, uh, unregister, turn the other one on and register with it. Right. So what tips and tricks do you have for any of those that are listening for someone new coming into UCS Manager and managing UCS Central? Uh, well, there's that one that I uh, that, that, uh, just mentioned. If you're, if you're going like Greenfield and dealing with the chicken and the egg, uh, you know, you just 
run it on the workstation. And again, I, I've found sometimes it's just simpler to, once I have the ESX environment built, um, just to rebuild UCS Central, because UCS Central is really pretty simple, um, especially if you're, you know, just getting started and have a few things to create, um, you know, like me, a few, a couple of ID pools is no, no big deal to recreate. Um, the, I, I'll, I'll throw this out. We're, we're still waiting. I'm sure we're going to have it very soon. Um, uh, sequential IDs in UCS Central. Um, we have that in, in UCS Manager. So if you're using UCS Central and you're looking for it, and you're not finding it, there's a reason. It's not hasn't made it there yet. If you really like it, like I do, I very much like my sequential IDs. Um, the, um, you, um, well, you just, we don't have it yet. So <laughs> the way that I'm addressing it personally uh, is that my Mac pools um, are still local, and uh, they will be migrated into UCS Central, and it's not, not too difficult. If you're going to go that route, you might consider using a name locally that will be the same name that you intend to use in UCS Central so that your templates um, have point, don't have to be reassociated to a different uh, pool ID name. So Yeah, that, that particular question you're, or the feature you're asking for is something that's coming up in an upcoming release that is a uh, a committed feature that we're warning to fix with the sequential ID pool, and so that's going to be coming in a in, in an upcoming release in the next in the future, near very near future. Cool. Well, I want to uh, switch over to Terry and talk to Terry for a little bit. Um, sorry to keep you waiting here, Terry, but I appreciate your patience. Um, I want to ask you some of the same types of questions. Uh, I wanted to understand about you know how long you guys have been a UCS customer and what what are some of the reasonings you guys chose to to use uh, to use UCS. We've actually been a, a customer of UCS since uh, 2009. We had the unique opportunity to build a greenfield data center at our location here in uh, Louisville, and uh, Cisco was a uh, was one of the few vendors that could provide us with the unified fabric, uh, obviously cover uh, in a greenfield data center, the network storage and uh, compute platform in a in a bundled solution. So for us, it provided synergies of technology and a single vendor and and some simplification of implementation. Obviously, uh, one of the interests we had was uh, you know 10, 10 gigabit infrastructure, uh, FCOE, and uh, obviously a converged uh, converged fabric. And then, obviously, uh, within our data center, we're actually 100% virtualized. Um, you don't hear that too often, but uh, our uh, data, our primary data center, our strategic data center, is 100%. So, uh, it's uh, physical. You know, if it's physical, it probably doesn't go in there. So, uh, we'll see how long that lasts. But it's been, uh, I think, since 2009, and we don't have a single physical uh, server in there. So that's a uh, something that we like to brag about. Um, <laughs> It also, you know, fits into our DR strategy uh, with uh, SRM, with our legacy applications. So uh, we just started uh, that. That was our initial implementation. We just started a new pod, which uh, which will basically house our cloud-based applications. So uh, that's a, a direction we're obviously moving forward, and that's a, a UCS implementation as well. So. Oh, great. Um, so, what, what are your plans on how you, you know, what are your plans to deploy and manage all of your domains with Central? I mean, it'd be good to have a bit of an understanding of what your environment looks like, the scale, and how you're planning to manage that scale um, with, uh, with with UCS Central. Well, we're actually very conservative with our UCS implementation in that our domains are quite small compared to most customers. Um, we are are basically a domain per cabinet. So it, obviously that model is, is more costly, but for us it provides uh, greater flexibility in a small fault, smaller fault domain in the event of any type of uh, FI disaster. Now we haven't any to date, but uh, one of the things that we're changing is our architecture. We're going to stripe, our, we, with our current infrastructure we stripe within the cabinet vertically, you know, per slot, but in our new infrastructure we'll basically stripe horizontal across cabinets. So we'll stripe across the bottom, and that way, if we do any type of maintenance, whether it be for you know 
firmware within uh, Cisco UCS, and obviously firmware is very centric to the platform in terms of evolving the platform over time. And uh, you know, now you're going to have UCS central enhancements. We're going to require certain versions of the firmware, so that that's a ever ever rotating uh, ever rotating. Uh, you know, uh, essentially it's it's always ongoing. So it's something that you're going to have to continue to do. It's not something that you can, not like the old days where basically you can install it, forget it, and let it run for five years. Well, that's just not uh, that's not the, where you're going to get your money out of UCS. So um, given that, we're very conservative with our domains, so we have a large number of domains to manage. So with the with our current pod that we did in 2009, that's basically 10 domains. You know, changing a VLAN in those 10 domains either needs to be orchestrated. Or basically, we have to make sure that things are consistent across all uh, all cabinets. So, you know, when in 2009, UCS Central was kind of talked about. It obviously wasn't out yet. It came out with 1.0 1 1 December of last year. Um, didn't support some of the orchestration we're looking for. So now that 1.1 is here, we're we're actually pretty excited about uh, getting that in to simplify, you know, our global presence because we have basically probably. Uh, Probably 75 to 100 cabinets globally. Um, we've just made some recent purchases, we'll, which we'll add to that. But you look at the large. We've got domains in India. We've got domains down in, uh, you know, in, in our DR site, and we've got domains in our primary data center here in Louisville. So, um, 100 cabinets are cross wide, and you're probably looking at, uh, you know, 30, 30, 25 to 30 domains total. So keeping that all in line and standardized is a, you know, is a, is a Orchestration challenge. It's also a you know operations challenge, but uh, UCS should simplify that and give us that that you know obviously being a heavy vCenter customer with uh, vSphere, giving us that vCenter look and feel for our physical architecture is is something that we're we're excited about because you know we're all comfortable with that uh, having used that since you know 2003 or whatever. But uh, UCS should give us that same level of uh, same level of granularity and, and a single pane of glass for our physical environment too. So, so what's your plan to utilize UCS Central in your existing domains versus the net new domains that you add in? What's your plan to well, to, to adopt it? To obviously alerting is uh, obviously alerting, uh, obviously monitoring, uh, pulling pulling uh, statistical data. Uh, those are all things that we're looking forward to do. Whereas you know, pulling that from 25 domains is a lot more complex than pulling it from one uh, one platform that can do that for us. So, you know, for our existing pod, we'll probably uh, go with basically just turning on a, a a small set of features and and leaving the leaving the uh, the service profiles and all the templates the way they are. And with our new pod and anything that's net new, we'll basically obviously pull into UCS Central and fully manage those. So. So you're planning to really just register the domains that you have today that you already have fully configured, really use it for you know the the centralized fault management KVM, and then over yes. time if you start changing any of the the blades or add new domains, that's when you would really start focusing on using the global pools and policies and and the global service profiles and templates. Correct? Uh, I would I would say yes. With it, we'll probably uh, pull them in. Obviously, implement our new pod infrastructure, and then basically. Uh, Maybe take a step back and say, okay, is there any? What's the risk reward scenario for us uh, for us doing this? And as as the uh, the reward becomes higher than the risk, then obviously that's when we'll probably uh, make that move. Okay. So I'm curious. Uh, you know, you have a lot of domains as well. How has been? How have you tested Central? I mean, I would imagine that you don't. You know, you. Are you utilizing the emulator to, to build out your environment to do that type of testing, or I'm just curious to see what you guys are doing? Actually, we we have with the with the advent of our new our new pod infrastructure, we basically started that project where we basically uh, took UCS Central, put it in the lab, and then basically used the platform emulator to create exactly the same amount that we had in production, and then we actually uh, backed up and restored those into our environment. Thus, able to recreate the environment uh, down to the last setting, and so you, you basically it, grab the the physical inventory from the emulator as well as all of the the, the configuration that you've done on the admin tab or the yep. service profiles, pools, and templates. Imported that and registered all 26 or 30 domains that you might have, or and basically in platform emulator form to UCS Central to test scale. Yes, and then refine the process for actually getting those 
successfully into UCS Central without impact. So okay. we essentially did our migration prior to doing our migration. So that's a that's a huge benefit for us. So you that that's been a benefit. The emulators really helped you to learn how to manage Central in an environment that's not production. So that's a that's a great win. Um, you know, what tips and tricks do you have um, with, with, for any new people coming in to managing UC, UCS Manager and or, and or Central? Well, I think for us, thinking back to 2009, and I'm probably repeating some of the items mentioned on the call, but we were able to do UCS before we actually did UCS. Uh, we were able to send some of our contractor pool through training using the emulator. We actually got our hands on before we even had any hardware on site. So. It's something you can uh, jump into um, without actually having the hardware and see if it's right for you. So, have you guys done any uh, scripting at all with something like UCS Power Tool uh, against real hardware or the emulator to do any orchestration? Actually, uh, you know, Cisco has helped us out with some of the uh, the VLAN simplification that we uh, that we encountered. Of you know, how do we get everything consistent across cabinets? So we've actually uh, done some of that orchestration. Um, the, you know, for us, we haven't added a lot, you know, all the time, but we've added some things in big chunks. So I know with uh, Pod 4, there's going to be quite a bit of, with our new pod that's going up, there's going to be quite a bit of orchestration that goes into that in terms of setting it up. And I, I think if you were to look at that project, we're actually ready to go uh, with the imp implementation of that hardware. Um, and and, and the, the setup should be a lot simpler than what we did in 2009, given the amount of tools that you guys have come out with. UCS Central, if we'd have had that back then, would have saved us a considerable amount of effort. But obviously, it is what it is, and uh, we should we should see those rewards with pod with our new pod that we're putting in. Well, thank, that's great, Terry. I really appreciate it. So we have a question from the um, from the, uh, the, the the from the the people that are watching. The question is. Um, and can I leverage a global service profile template as part of an auto config policy? So that'd be a great question for Krish. Um, you know, if you don't mind answering that question, Krish, um, that's uh, you know, it's uh, something I know we can't do today. But if you don't mind commenting on what our plans for uh, you know adding that. Absolutely. So uh, just for uh, giving the background for folks that are not familiar with AutoConfig, essentially within UCS Manager today, you could actually have uh, server pools that are dynamic, meaning there are these things called qualification policies that you can put in that will help you filter whatever servers you actually have that would uh, allow you to pick a particular characteristics of a server and then actually place it in a pool. And those pools can grow and shrink dynamically depending on the pool of available physical servers that match that characteristic become uh, available or not. Autoconfig policies essentially allow you to leverage those dynamic server pools um, with service profiles. Um, today, UCS Central does have the capability for dynamic service pools, and the support for auto config policies is something that will be added in at the global service profile template level uh, in an upcoming release. In fact, in the next upcoming release, I should say. Okay, that's a, thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate it. Sure. So, um, so I want to go move over to Brad and, uh, and you know. Definitely get you into the conversation as well. So uh, I know Brad, you work in the in in, in the field um, with some of our customers on with UCS Central. I'm curious to understand, you know, how a greenfield environment, someone that doesn't have UCS, uh, could take advantage of UCS Central. So a new customer coming into uh, and into just UCS in general, you know, what are your recommendations and how can they take advantage of of utilizing UCS Central day one? Sure, Eric. So a Greenfield customer is actually sort of the, the dream scenario, if you will, in that with a Greenfield customer, we can start out right away and define global policies, global, global ID pools, define our global service profile templates and our global service profiles. So it is actually a much easier scenario to set all that up ahead of time. And then when they start building out their service profiles, they're already global service profiles, so it becomes a, a, a very easy transition to move to, to UCS Central because it was done at the ground floor. 
So what about folks that are already existing customers? I mean, um, you know, what are what would be our recommendation to uh, to deploy UCS Central uh, in their environment for a, what I call a brownfield UCS manager customer? Well, so I like to kind of peel that onion back a, a little bit, right? So, so day one, you don't just want to flip a switch and all of a sudden have everything being managed by UCS Central. Um, most of those customers already have some long-standing operational policies in place. So what we do with UCS Central is if they've got existing domains in place, the simplest thing they can do is just register those domains with UCS Central. By simply registering the domains with UCS Central, right out of the box you get things like centralized inventory, centralized fault and log aggregation, uh, the ability to do statistics collection and, and, uh, and reporting on those statistics. KVM cross-launch, ID management. Just by registering your domains, you get that you know, right out of the box. So I would say, let's start there. Start start easy. Just register the systems. With and, and that doesn't take any outage on uh, from their from their servers or the data plane at all to just do that registration process, correct? Nope, nope. It's a, it's a no-risk operation. You just go to the, the admin tab and click on UCS Central and say register with UCS Central. And right away that information is now being gathered and collected by UCS Central and it, and it has the ability to see all that through the UCS Central interface. So as I grow comfortable with doing that, that type of operation, what's the logical next, right. next step after I've got that, that centralized inventory or read-only view? What would be the next step we would recommend for a customer to start you know, centralizing the config? Right, so, so like I said, kind of building on the, the layer of that onion, if you will. So the next logical step would say, all right, let's start utilizing UCS Central to help me manage my environment. So what I can begin to do is start slowly giving control to UCS Central to configure various settings in the environment. In fact, I, I can actually show you that if you'd like to see that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to actually share one of my screens here and just show you uh, what that actually look like, looks like. So if you see over here, I have a UCS manager instance up, and, I'm, and I see that this UCS manager instance is indeed registered with UCS Central. And you can see that when I register the system with UCS Central, one of the things I can do is decide how I resolve policies uh, within that UCS manager instance. So if I choose local, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, all right, all of my local settings that I've already set up within that UCS manager environment, those are still in play, if you will. Those are still being managed locally. But the minute I flip over here to a global setting and I say, all right, I want to take, say, time zone management and make that global or communication services and make that global, what I'm doing is I'm handing the keys to UCS Central. And now UCS Central has the ability to control that setting. So whatever UCS Central says that setting should be at a domain-wide level, it will be for that UCS system. So for instance, here I've said um, whatever UCS Central has in place for, say, communication services, that will be the setting for this system. So if I go look at how UCS Central has that set up, if I go over here to UCS Central, for instance, and I look at you know maybe SNMP, you can see that um, I've got uh, some settings defined here through UCS Central. If I go back here to this UCS system and I look at, um, say, those communication services settings, you can see that they are indeed in play here. And because they are set up by UCS Central and these settings are owned by UCS Central, I don't have the ability to change these through my individual UCS manager instance because I've given the keys to UCS Central at that point. I'm going to stop sharing my desktop here and go back to the Q&A. Well, that's great. That's a good second level of configuration that you can do. So you can really start focusing on those things of admin, what I can call administrative policies, things that are more out of band and deal with you know, monitoring and authentication and, and whatnot. Um, so then the next level, what would, what, what, if we keep peeling that onion, what would be the next level of uh, configuration and management you'd want to, to move up into central? Right. So, so we're, we're taking baby steps here, right? We're, we're just first, first level is we have the ability to see everything and sort of gather everything through the central interface. 
second level, which I just showed, is the ability to now configure domain-wide settings. But the third and most powerful level is, hey, I want to actually utilize UCS Central to define all my global service profiles and define all my global service profile templates, utilize it for, for essentially doing all of my day-to-day -day management of my UCS environment. So I think it's unrealistic to think in a brownfield environment that, hey, I can just walk in here, install UCS Central, set up global policies, set up global pools, define my global service profile templates, and just start managing my environment. That, I think, is unrealistic because it's, <clears throat> it's too disruptive to the current processes. Instead, what I see most customers doing is more of a philosophy, sort of like what, what Terry described over at GE, where they say, all right, so what we're going to do, is we're going to take this approach a little bit differently. We're going to start registering our systems with UCS Central right away so that we get the benefit of seeing that environment. And we now have the ability to actually start slowly opting in to domain-wide settings. But we don't have the ability to take these running service profiles that are local service profiles and just shift them to global service profiles. So what we're going to do is for our new environments, we're going to go ahead and define global ID pools, global service profile templates. We're going to define global policies. And we're going to start utilizing those global service profiles and global service profile templates for all net new environments. Then, for existing environments, we are going, we're not going to just take a concerted effort and just you know, plow through them and migrate them over to, to glo global management. Instead, what we're going to do is do things like you know, look for outage windows and, and things like that and potentially take a system at a time or a service profile at a time. If I need to reboot a service profile, maybe shift that to a global service profile at that time. Or, um, but, but not necessarily just, you know, Start, start across the board and sweep through my whole en entire data center and shift it to global service profile management. I want to just wait for the opportunity to shift it towards, towards global service profiles. Then, you know, after a period of time, once I've got everything, um, you know, I've got all my new environments shifted over to global service profile management, and I've got some of my brownfield environment shifted over to global service profile management, then I maybe look at the environment and say, all right, I've got a handful left, Let's just schedule some time and shift that over to global management. So it's, it's not an easy process, but the benefits are, are, are very valuable. Well, that's great. That's great to hear. So I want to make sure we key on one of the questions that we had from the audience that we said we were going to talk through. And then what the question was is, can a local service profile be, be migrated to a global service profile? And what would that process be if we're going to do that? So the answer is, I can't go to UCS Central and click on a local service profile and say migrate to a global service profile. The reason for that is it's dependent on things like global ID pools, global policies, um, and some of those types of global settings, those things that are managed by the global manager, if you will. So there is no facility to just migrate it over. However, I could um, you know, adopt a philosophy like I just described, or I could um, schedule some some downtime for that system and then maybe uh, automate that at, at a later date possibly through some scripting mechanism through through PowerShell scripting or something like that but there is no built-in capability to migrate that from a local service profile to a global service profile so it really is focus on building the foundation first building all those pools and policies and then create your service profiles at the central level and that's what you're saying. And basically, yeah. really, really focus on net new systems that you're going to manage with Central uh, versus you know moving a local service profile into Central. Yep, the the capability is not there to just migrate it. It, it it's 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 a little bit of work. Simply put. Yeah, great. And from a scalability perspective, you know, they're, they're asking as well as how many pools and policies and can be managed per domain and whatnot. There's really, you know, I would say it's in the number of thousands of pools and policies that can be managed um, with, with, with Central. I mean, we can manage up to 10,000 servers in, in current release, uh, no matter what form factor. You know, it could be a, a, a Blade or a um, UCS-managed rack mount server. Uh, one that's cabled and connected into UCS Manager. So that's, you know, we can, we, we're going to be able to manage, you know, thousands and thousands of pools and policies and such. Yep. 
Um, I just want to go ahead and close. We just hit the top of the hour. I want to thank everyone that uh, you know our panel. Uh, I want to thank Brad and and Jeff and Chris and Chris and um, Robert and Terry. I want to uh, also re uh, recommend people go to our communities website. So that's communities.cisco.com/ucs. So again, communities.cisco.com/ucs. Myself, Jeff, Brad, and many other people on the UCS team are out there to answer your questions. So if you have further questions that we've not been able to answer today, please go out to there, post it as a question, and, and there's a lot of great uh, you know items that you can you can look at, documents you can sit, watch, videos you can watch there. So I highly recommend people to uh, to go there, you know, and and, and you know, the community is what you make of it. So we'd love to see more and more people uh, you know uh, collaborate there. Again, I want to thank our panel for joining. Uh, we'll have another one next month, so watch the Cisco Data Center and Cloud uh, Google Plus um, user, and we'll actually do another event again next month. This will be, again, recurring every month. Again, thank you again to my panel, and thanks for everyone watching.